Uh, now let's have a little bit of fun with uh, Fox, as we like to do from time to time. We're going to bring on Carl Frisch from Media Matters to help us do that. Carl, uh, welcome to the Young Turks. Thanks for having me. Oh, no, we appreciate your time. Uh, so first, uh, let's talk about uh, a little trick that Fox does with Republican candidates, uh, including <laughs> what they're doing in Massachusetts. Uh, w what do they do right before the elections on Fox? Well, uh, suddenly this supposed news network goes from reporting the news fair and balanced to offering up its airtime free of charge to whatever Republican candidate happens to be, uh, you know, just days away from an election. Yeah, oh, that uh, is interesting. Now, yeah, well, and it's it's very good when you can if you're the candidate because you get to raise money on their shows. People will encourage people to give money to your candidacy. You get to lie about any scandals that have come up. You get to talk about how bad your opponent is. Uh, and you get to rile up your base just in time for an election. And do you have the numbers in front of you, Carl, for how many times, uh, how many minutes they gave uh, in the Virginia ra governor's race, New Jersey governor race? Uh, oh, it was something like 110 minutes. It might have been actually been more. But, um, yeah, they, during the 2009 mid-year election, they had the Republican candidates from New Jersey and Virginia uh, and the conservative candidate from New York uh, in that special congressional election on over and over again. Um, and now they're doing the same thing with the Senate race in, in Massachusetts. Yeah, 110 minutes is a bit gigantic. I mean, that's a lot of free air time. Now, do you have a sense of how, much, uh, how many minutes the Democratic candidates got on Fox News for those same races? Yeah, I can't think of an appearance. <laughs> um, really? Shut you know, out. I, well, it's not to say, it's not to say that these races aren't newsworthy you know i think anybody who's been involved on the local level would tell you that you know your your wet dream is to get your candidate uh... local news coverage and national news coverage would be you know uh... a coup um, so yeah fox should feel free to have these candidates on and interview them um, but they should be providing you know some equal time to the other candidates um, and they shouldn't spend all of their time just lying about the opposing candidates uh, the other networks covered these races and uh, and talked to the candidates, uh, but it's Fox that takes it even further. You know, it wasn't that long ago that Fox put out a an order saying that you know serious problems on their network would be addressed and there'd be a zero tolerance policy for screw ups. Um, Mike Huckabee was raising money on his television show uh, on week on the weekend at Fox, uh, and then turning around and giving that money to candidates. He would give out the website for people to go to. And it sounded innocuous. It was something like, uh, you know, cut the waste and lower taxes dot com or something like that. Uh, and then when you went to that, I actually sent you Mike Huckabee's pack and asked for money. And so they told him to stop doing that. But even to this day, if you go to Mike Huckabee's page on foxnews dot com, he's got links all over the place for his Mike Huckabee dot com, which raises money for for candidates. But Carl, you got Dick Moore is raising money too. Uh, but let's be fair now. Those guys happen to be Republicans, and I know uh, Scott Brun, who's the Republican nominee in Massachusetts went on on at least three occasions, gave out his website and asked people to donate uh, money to his campaign through Fox News. But uh, they had the Democratic candidate on right afterwards and made sure to give her website, right? Right. <laughs> um, maybe in bizarro Fox world. So, um, but no, that didn't happen. Now, the thing is, Carl, like, we, this is, I think, obvious to a lot of people, right? Like, we, of, of course, of course they support the Republican candidates. Of course they give them free airtime. Of course they let them fundraise through that. Of course they don't have the Democrats on there telling them, telling people what their website is and how they can send in money. Uh, but the real problem isn't that, is it, Carl? The real problem is they pretend to be a real news organization. Well, that's just the problem. You know, an argument however misguided, could have been made a year or two ago that Fox News was a conservative news outlet. Um, that argument cannot be made today. Uh, when the, the White House claimed that Fox was not real news or legitimate and that it was a political operation, they were right. Uh, and the real joke was when the, the mainstream press circled the wagons around Fox. Because there is no difference from the time Fox starts broadcasting new programming in the morning to when it goes off the air at night and starts repeats. Um, yeah, they have you know what they describe as the op-ed page of their of their network, those hosts that express their opinions. But what do the people that they claim to be news people do? They report on the opinions that their hosts are talking about all day long. Uh, there is no difference uh, at all between news and opinion at Fox. They 
are now the propaganda arm or the communications arm of the Republican National Committee. Yeah, breaking news. Uh, this just in, Sean Hannity thinks Bill Ayers is connected to Barack Obama. Uh, I, I know, right, I know the kind of news they do. Now, uh, luckily, though, they're going to fix all this, Carl, because they've got a new uh, objective commentator coming in. Her name is Sarah Palin, and I'm sure she's just going to give straight news uh, and commentary. Um, now, put, putting the kidding aside, isn't this actually a more egregious case, along with Huckabee, than what they're even doing with the candidates, Carl? Because basically they're paying her to put her name out there more and to put out her agenda there more so that she could then later run for office. Well, not just put her name out there. She was on O'Reilly last night uh, promoting her book, defending herself, talking about an event that she's being paid to speak at. Um, so really, you know, they're paying her for her own, like, infomercials, apparently. Uh, I have to tell you, though, the, the most hysterical thing happened on Glenn Beck tonight um, in a sit-down interview between two titans, uh, intellectual heavyweights, Glenn Beck and Sarah Palin, uh, you know, Fox's resident conspiracy theorist-in-chief, asked Sarah Palin who her fa favorite founding father was. Uh, now, I'm sure if I asked you that question, you'd be able to talk a bit about some of them and maybe all, you know, a, a big number of them. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 Carl, I didn't see this, but I can't wait for the answer. Okay. Can you guess? Okay. First of all, here's what I guarantee you. It certainly wasn't someone like Tom Paine, right? <laughs> and, no. Okay. And could she get Jefferson or Washington or Franklin? Come on, please Are tell me. Are you giving names? <laughs> Let me give you a clue. What newspapers do you read? Well, please tell me she could name a founding father. Please tell me. Her favorite, according to Sarah Palin, her favorite founding father is all of them. Oh, come Just on. like the newspaper she reads. Not kidding. She eventually talked about Washington. But, uh, yeah, her favorite founding father is all of them, according to Sarah Palin. No, that's, that's, it's unreal. It's, it's so pathetic. But you know what? And that's my final question to you, Carl. Admit that Media Matters actually loves this. Okay, because you're going to get such great material from Sarah Palin on Fox News. Well, you know, it's not just Fox. You know, it, it was just today that Pat Robertson said that uh, the earthquake in, in Haiti was caused by a pact the country made with the devil. No, I, I know. We covered that earlier in the show. That, now, that so, I, you know, that's not even funny, though. That guy just, you know, that's... There is sick lunacy uh, abounds on television. That's why we're there, and... Uh, does it make our, our jobs easy when people like Sarah Palin show up on Fox News? Yes. Uh, does it make it more enjoyable? No. I mean, we'd rather be able to focus on, on uh, you know, other things in the press. And in a perfect world, there'd be no need for a place like Media Matters. Right. And for those of you who don't know, of course, MediaMatters.org, they just, all they do is they track what the conservatives say on air, and they say, all right, well, here it is. And... That's why Bill, the likes of Bill O'Reilly hate them, because they're like, how dare you quote me? So, uh, they, and you guys do a good job of driving them crazy by simply just quoting their words back. So, right, they don't like transcripts or videos of themselves. The radio hosts don't like having the audio uh, put up there with transcripts. The newspaper reporters don't like the facts being pointed out. But we've got to do it um, so that people out there that don't have time to sift through all the news that we do or perhaps just we read one paper and assume what the reading is, is correct so that they can get the facts somewhere. There you go. Carl Frisch from Media Matters. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Can't get enough of the Young Turks? Well, then subscribe to the TYT's YouTube channel. What's the matter with you?